Welcome to FRC Media News for Thursday, March 1st, 2018. I'm Keith Tebow. Tonight, we're five days away from the special referendum on the financing of a new BMC Durfee High School, and we will recap last week's forum. We have information for pet lovers about volunteer work at a local nonprofit animal shelter, and we congratulate the BCC men's basketball team for winning the state championship. But first, let's check in with the news headlines of the week. We bring in Will Richmond, digital news editor at the Herald News. Will, welcome. Thanks, Keith. Good to see you again. Yeah, as we said, five days away uh, for the referendum on the financing of a new BMC Durfee High School. It will be held next Tuesday. Of course, next week we'll have a recap of how the vote went. But uh, let's recap last week's forum. Uh, last week, both the Herald News and FRC Media sponsored a forum with the proponents and opponents of the ballot question here in our studio at Bristol Community College. Will Richmond was the uh, moderator for the event. Let me just ask you first, Will, what were your thoughts on the, um, on the event itself? Seemed to go well. People were respectful and got their, their word out. Yeah, I think both sides came in with a similar attitude. You know, Paul Coogan representing the, uh, the ballot committee that's representing the yes side and uh, Bob Kamara representing the ballot committee on the no side. You know, they both came in with a similar attitude of, you know, we want to present our facts. We are not looking to for this to be a contentious type of argument debate situation. So I think they both came in. They had their information ready and uh you know, they had the opportunity to to speak their mind on the project while also um, sort of responding to what the other side was saying and doing so in a respectful manner. So that was definitely appreciated, uh, appreciated in that process. Now, other than the opening closing statements, which were timed, you kind of let them just have a free, free flow conversation. Was there anything that um, that you personally learned throughout the discussion? that I'm sure has already been shared, uh, you know, through news reports, but that, that you uh, learned from the discussion that a lot of voters may not have, have heard up to that point. I don't know if there was a lot that I hadn't known at that point. I found uh, some of the um, responses interesting, you know, some thoughts such as uh, the amount of information that was presented in other communities that were developed in schools or looking to build schools compared to what was made uh, public at meetings. Um, in Fall River. Of course, some of that is interesting as well in that, uh, you know, the information does still exist. You, you know, it doesn't have to be presented at a meeting to obtain it. Um, but, you know, so there was some of that, some of that, that back behind the scenes effort that, uh, that I kind of found a little more interesting in, in this process. And I know throughout the week, the Herald News has continued to provide different views of this. You had a, a story this week about some seniors at BMC Durfee High School who say that even though they're not going to be able to benefit from a new school, that it's needed. And also an interesting article, and if you can touch upon it a little bit, um, at I believe it was uh, Mitchell, Mitchell Heights Apartments where there was a presentation of both sides and, and seniors, many of which um, own homes and the people who are against the ballot question are saying that it would impact a lot of seniors, those on fixed income. Looked like uh, the, the, those in the room that day at least had, had a split view on, on the future of, of this ballot question. Yeah, you know, we really did want to get try to get the feelings of, uh, of the city's older residents. You know, some of them would no longer have connections to the school system and what their feelings were. And, and you're right, there was a split, uh, a bit of a split in the people we spoke to. Some who feel that it's an investment that will benefit the city as a whole. Others who felt that, you know, because they don't have connections to the school system, uh, why should they be on the hook to pay for a new high school? So, um, you know, there was, there was that split attitude, and um, I know that there's been more presentations at uh, senior association meetings and neighborhood meetings this week as well. So I imagine that split is carrying out in other locations uh, across the city. Well, we won't have too much longer to find out what happens. One week from now, we'll know the results of the referendum. There may be some other issues that may come up, but that's something we can talk about next week in the eventuality that some of these issues uh, may, may pop up. Switching to another topic relating to four of our public schools, there was a, um, an article this week that was posted online at the Herald News from actually Channel 5 in Boston talking about the number of students in the Commonwealth that were restrained at local schools. Uh, I believe that was in the past year. And Fall River schools actually did not fare well. Two of the uh, top, actually the two top schools 
that had uh, to restrain students for whatever reason, disciplinary reasons, uh, over the past year were schools in Fall River, the Doran Community School and the Mary Fonseca School. Um, have you been able to follow up at all as to you know, what the reasons were here? Well, we, ha we haven't done any follow-up on that end. There were some comments from the superintendent who yeah. noted that, you know, these aren't, um, you know, restraints aren't necessarily illegal right. in their use. Um, so, you know, he said that they have monitored the situation. They are aware of the schools that have, uh, you know, utilized restraints at, at these high rates. And that in their their view to this point, that for the most part, they've been purpose purpose in their use and uh and and allowed so i mean the, you know the, the, these numbers are coming from a new law that requires schools to report them this is law has only been in effect for since 2016 right um so there's not a lot of background data to say if this is a number that's increased decreased right stayed the same or anything to that effect either right we'll have to look for next year at this time when the numbers come out again but it's interesting to know again there's no there's no uh, implication of any impropriety at all. It's just that the, the numbers have come out in terms of restraints at public schools and two Fall River schools were at the top of the list uh, for last year. All right, finally, Will, um, at this week's uh, Fall River City Council meeting, uh, there was discussion by uh, individuals from the Fall River Charter Commission. As many of you know, the voters of Fall River voted in November to enact a new city charter. And some members of that uh, Charter Commission are complaining that city officials, be it the mayor's office or even the city council, are not uh, paying heed to some of the elements of the new city charter. And that came out at the city council meeting this week. I'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so there's a concern among some of those former Charter Commissions that, uh, as you mentioned, that the certain regulations aren't being filed. Particularly, there was a provision that immediately after passage, a commission would be formed to ensure that the charter met correctly with city ordinances and vice versa and that has not happened yet uh, the response from um, corporation council joe macy has been that maybe the time to do this is in june after the budget has been decided but uh you know as mentioned by the charter advocates the, the charter itself called for that to happen immediately mm -hmm. that hasn't been the case now this is a commission that's supposed to be formed in conjunction with the city council so it's not solely the mayor's office that's lagging on this there is a council uh part of this that is required as well and they have failed to do that so we'll see where it goes and at this point the charter advocates are considering the hiring of legal counsel to see if um there's any legal ramifications that might be included in this it is sort of interesting however in that when we were holding um candidate forms for city council candidates that there were a number of city council candidates be they incumbents and also those running for the seat that um, weren't necessarily ready to endorse the new charter at that time and I believe Mayor Correa also had reservations about some elements of the new charter at that uh, at that time but the charter is now the law it's now the constitution if you will of the city and we'll see what happens if these uh, proponents of the city charter and these charter commissioners will take um, and what level of any legal action that they may take as uh, we move we move forward. All right, Will, what else is coming up at the paper over the next few days? Well, just when you thought, thought talk of the Massachusetts School Building Authority and yeah. schools was coming to an end, not so fast. We have uh, our friends at Diamond are also looking to potentially yeah. rehab their school, and they have just entered the MSBA phase, uh, eligibility phase, so we take a little bit of a look at their where they stand right now, as well as figure out what's next. Um, our neighbors over in Westport voted yes to build a new That's right. uh, high middle school over there. And so we have a, a look at what's next in Westport as well. All right, sounds good. All right, Will, we'll talk next week. Take care. All right, have a good weekend, Keith. We'll have more FRC Media News right after this. Here are some job descriptions on the latest hot jobs list from the Fall River Career Center. Dental Assistant. Dental Dreams, located at 45 Mariano Bishop Boulevard, is looking for a full-time licensed dental assistant to provide support to the office staff and assist the dental staff with treatment and care to patients. Job number 1028-3435. Food Operations Manager. 
Sedesco Operations is seeking a full-time experienced food operations manager to work closely with the clinical nutrition department at St. Anne's Hospital, acting as a liaison between dietitians and nurse managers. Job number 10278054. Seasonal Laborer. The Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation is looking for a full-time, experienced seasonal laborer to perform manual labor tasks and assist carpenters, excavation workers, and plumbers with repairs at Heritage State Park. Job number 10284223. H&R Block, located at 1321 South Main Street, is looking to fulfill the following full-time positions. First year tax professional, job number 10272335. Receptionist, job number 10272382. Bridgestone Firestone Auto Care, located at 748 Pleasant Street, is also looking to fulfill the following full-time positions. Retail Sales Associate, job number 10286962. Automotive Technician, job number 10286959. For more information on these or other positions, visit jobquest.detma.org or call the Fall River Career Center at 508-730-5000. Welcome back. As we already discussed, Fall River residents will turn out this Tuesday for a special election to decide the financing of a new BMC Durfee High School. FRC Media, in conjunction with the Herald News, held a televised forum last week to get viewpoints on the pros and cons of the issue. Here are some highlights. In 2012, we had the Mount Vernon Group come out and do a complete estimate of renovations. $112 million later, that was our answer. The MSBA came down, walked the building with the estimate, and told us no money for renovations would ever be given to our project. We'll talk about that a little further later, I'm sure, too. Cost. The simple way to think about the cost is we are getting a $263 million high school for $98.5 million. Stay there for one moment. $98.5 million, we get a fully furnished, all new $263 million Durfee. At least 120 other cities and towns in Massachusetts asked for all or a part of our $165 million. And the city of Fall River is the one that won the money. The tax increase on a $212,000 home is about $9.58. If, if you want to have your children in a modern, secure learning center, First and foremost, this is a vote on how we fund the building of a school. It is not a referendum on education. We are in total agreement that we need a new Durfee. How we pay for it is the issue. And in spite of the assertions by the proponents of a debt exclusion, opposition to that funding is not somehow a vote against education. It is a stand against more taxes. The misinformation campaign for debt exclusion option is both well-funded and relentless. Statements that are presented as facts, such as if we reject the debt exclusion, we will lose MSB funding, are false. The actual fact is the MSBA does not require a debt exclusion. It requires only the full funding of the project. And I quote, a city, town, or regional school district must vote to appropriate and authorize the full amount of a project's cost, including both the local share and, and, and the MSBA share, if any. The total project budget amount must be authorized and approved." Unquote. We can, in fact, receive funding as long as we fund the full amount of the project, regardless of the manner used to fund it. This bond affects people's lives, not only when they walk in that beautiful building, and I will say it's a beautiful building, but it affects the life. When a child walks in that building, he may walk into a beautiful building, but as we heard last night at the South End Youth Center, we're going to have people, when he goes home, they might not have an apartment. And I, Paul would be much more 
knowledgeable of the fact, but we have a very high percentage of our children right now in the, in the school lunch program. This city is not an economic powerhouse, and we all know it. We know that we have the lowest average income in the state, and the reality is it is not a no-brainer to people who are living on the, you know, on the verge of losing their houses and on the verge of they have to pay. It's not only this. There are, there are many, many other factors. I'm glad Chip brought up the fact that we're on a, on a bad economic level for income and, um, and cost of living and all these things going up. But at the same time, how do you change a city? How do you change a city that's running at one of the lowest residential tax rates in the area? And I got that off of one of uh, Chip's supporters' websites. We'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, how do you make it better? You make it better with good schools public safety, clean streets. Look at look at what we have in Fall River. They've built a number of elementary schools that are really show places that will go anywhere in the state. You have Viveris, you have Fonzo, you have Green. These are beautiful, beautiful schools, and I wish more of the public got into them. You look at our, a couple of our uh, middle schools. You look at Morton and Cuss. These were all buildings built with the help of MSBA. And for the size and scope of the Durfee project, which is five, four or five times the size of one of our biggest elementary schools, Rivera's, they're giving us $163 million. So either we take advantage of this now, or we go back into the line and wait another five or eight years down the road when the costs are going to go up exponentially, and we're in a real problem. The city of Fall River right now needs to change its mindset. We have got to improve the quality of life for everyone in the city. And a good school, a good Durfee High School is part of that mix. And again, join us next week as we'll have a recap of next week's referendum. The overpopulation of stray cats in Fall River continues to be a major problem. Animal Control Supervisor Cynthia Berard Kadima tells FRC Media News that her department is the catalyst behind a proposed ordinance that basically states if you feed stray cats, you own them. We're going to try to have people be responsible for the animals that they're feeding outside. A lot of times we'll go to a house and people will say, oh no, that's not my cat, um, but they fed it for 10 years. So we just want people to take a little bit more responsibility with the animals that they're feeding. Maybe they can give them a rabies shot. Maybe they. So we're, we're, it, it's a work in progress, but I think for now we're probably going to try to have people just be responsible with the animals that they feed. Just a rabies shot. It's state law. They should be getting these cats a rabies shot. And if you happen to be an animal lover, you may want to consider volunteering some time at Forever Pause No Kill Animal Shelter in the city's south end. Here's more. I would like to get some people that would be willing to volunteer to foster some of our cats. We're looking for some good foster homes, and you can get applications at the shelter or online. And we are looking for people to come and help us out with our outreach programs as well. Any number in mind in terms of how many you need or just as many as you can get and work them in? Well, that's I think is what you just said is absolutely correct. When we get them in, some people come in, some people have to do it for community service, so they have to do a certain amount of hours. We have a minimum of 20 hours. We ask if you make a commitment, a volunteer coordinator, Joyce, does uh, a volunteer orientation, usually the first Sunday of the month. It usually takes a couple of hours. So we ask with that commitment that you have to buy a yellow T-shirt and you have to be there for at least 20 hours. We'll have more FRC Media News right after this. This girl is Greta. She is a 11-year-old pit mix. She's a second-time offender. She came here at first because she was involved in a house fire. She is 11 years old, so she is a little bit of an older dog. She is no kids only because of how high energy she is. Um, she could definitely knock one of them over, so it's best to keep her with olders. She can be iffy with dogs sometimes. She kind of prefers to have all the attention herself. So she needs someone who understands her and understands that she is going to be really excited most of the time. Um, she loves walks. She loves being outside. She loves to play. So if you're interested in little Miss Greta over here, please come down and visit us. I want to introduce to you today Cactus. She has very special needs. Um, she had a very difficult time in her adopted home. She needs a very, very quiet home where she is the center of attention and someone who will give her a lot of time and patience because she's going to need it. Um, she's a young cat, she's under a year. If she was the only cat and you paid enough attention to her, she would fit into your home quite nicely as an only cat, only pet, with no small children in the house. 
So if you're that special person, I beg you to come down and see her and meet her and know her for what she is. The Bristol Community College men's basketball team is the 2018 Massachusetts Community College Athletic Conference champions after winning the state tournament last weekend. It's the second time head coach Rob Delalu and the Bayhawks have taken home that championship. We don't make anything uh, easy, I tell you that. Uh, I mean, we were up 17, I think, in the first half, and then they made a, what, a 24 to, 24 to like six run or something to take yeah. the lead, and then I think they went up as much as five, and then we started to battle back and then went up as much as seven, had the ball maybe three or four times, uh, three or four times in that, in that span, and then within that three or four times we had the ball, we turned the ball over, no good quality shots. And then down the stretch of the game, we're up seven uh, with two minutes left and a couple of turnovers, a couple of things to, uh, you know, a couple of turnovers made it much more interesting than it should have been. And then right at the end there, we were in position to, uh, you know, I mean, they, they had the ball with, you know, one point lead. Um, we played their style of basketball today. And, and, and unfortunately, we started off our style right. and then we turned there. They, I mean, they controlled the backboards heavily. I mean. 20 plus offensive rebounds. Um, when a team does that, it's extremely difficult to, uh, to you know, you can't keep giving extra possessions. And we're yeah. turning the ball over, giving the extra possessions, and you still win the game. It's, you know, imagine if we could clean that up where we could be as a oh, team. Oh, man. I was, yep. was going to say, during the first half, you guys had a 16 point lead. You guys were basically in control the yep. whole first half, but you were giving them not third, second opportunities. You gave them like third and yes. fourth opportunities. Yes. You were lucky they were missing a lot of yes. those third and fourth opportunities as well. Absolutely. I thought the crucial point in the game, Coach, and you might think this as well, when you guys were up 37 to 30 in the half, um, Bucker Hill made that run, yeah. took that 41, 45 to 41 lead. You called a timeout, kind of settled your team down because it seemed like at that point, that was a crucial point because, you know, young kids sometimes in a championship game, they had the lead, all of a sudden they don't. Yeah. Things could have went either way right there, and they, they kind of answered the bell. You guys kind of came back and regained that lead, kind of regained that momentum because Bunker Hill gained that momentum, it seemed like. Even at the end of the first half, it seemed like they gained that momentum and it looked like it was going to be topsy-turvy right there. But you gained it back and and really there was no one looking back after that. Bunker Hill is well coached um, and uh, they're very well coached. They play extremely tough. Um, they battle. Um, they, they play that strong. They play strong basketball. And the biggest thing I told our team before the game began, I said, look, you know, you be yourselves. Do not morph into the other team or don't be extra. I think we got up a lot and then once we were up, I think we kind of late, we, we, instead of just doing what worked, we kind of just started going to that mode. Once Bunker Hill, because they're not going to give up, they're well coached, once Bunker Hill decided that they were going to, um, you know, play bully ball and really uh, go after it, and they made that little run, you could tell our guys started looking at each other, and then all of a sudden we started doing the extra stuff that I said that we need to get away from. So we started doing a lot of one-on-ones. The ball didn't have a lot of energy behind it, and because the ball didn't have the energy, um, we struggled. And, and when we don't move the ball, we struggle as a team because we're not, you know, we can play half court, but that's not what we want to do. We want to get out and go and move. And what do we have today? 60-something points, 67, right. 66. We scored 67 against them the last time we played It was played a different them. style of game today. Yeah, a very different style of game. And, you know, we, and, and we want to be in the 80s and 90s. They want to keep it in the 60s. So we kept it right where they wanted it to be. Um, and hopefully we learn our lessons. Um, there was a lot of young malfunctions um, in the huddles um, out there in the game. And my job is to kind of prepare them, teach them, and, and get them ready to do what they need to do. Most definitely. I did want to ask you, Coach, a couple years ago you played in this tournament, played against Marker Hill in the final. You put your team up in a hotel um, down the road. And uh, the team kind of came out flat the next, the next day. Mm -hmm. Was there a little bit of science going, by, <laughs> going into driving yeah. all the way back? Um, to Fall River, back to Bristol. It was a little bit of a science behind that, kind I mean, of thinking, you know, you get, you get some young kids in a hotel, get them away different. from home, and it's just I different, different if it kind was, of environment. If it was going to be our first time, so I didn't this year. If it was going to be our first, um, if it was going to be our first stint on doing it, um, first day, I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to pick last night to be our first time we stay in a hotel as a team. If we had some preseason tournaments where we already did it, then I would have. You know what I mean? I would have because then we're used to it. We understand rule, regulation. When you get a young group and they're not used to it, then you go out there and the next thing you know, they're, they're thinking, um, you know, other ways or staying up late or having too much fun um, versus saying, no, go back. 
Let's, let, let's it's, it's, we get on the bus. It's a road trip. We're thinking of it like another it, game. It, yeah, right. just like make it like another game and, and go from there. And um, and I think it worked and it worked early. And I just think we got a little shell shocked. Um, we still, you know, our unification is still quite not where it needs to be um, as far as you know just moving together. You know, you need all five parts to move um, together properly. And we're almost there. We're almost there. But it, it, you know, so I'm glad we got the win. It's the second time we've gotten the MCCAC championship in, in my tenure. Um, and you know now we're moving on to the the big the big thing is New England's and yeah, that's what that's we what want. It's all about right um, there. But we we got to know if we're going to win in New England's, we got to play better. Um, Bunker Hill looking at us and they believe they can beat us. After, I mean, this is twice this game has come down like this. Um, and then when you look at um, Bunker Hill and then the other teams in the region, we have to do um, a better job. Uh, our effort has to be better than today in order to win it. And hopefully our guys get that message. Good luck to the Bayhawks as they compete in the NJCAA Region 21 Division III Tournament this weekend at Bunker Hill Community College. That'll do it for this edition of FRC Media News. You can catch FRC Media News Thursday and Friday at 6 p.m. and online 24-7 at frcmedianews.org. For all of us here at FRC Media News, I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great week. We'll see you next Thursday.